we came up with the idea for Long Road, we knew we wanted to make things that were uniquely ours. And Michigan was one of the first ideas that came to us. We've always talked about finding fresh Michigan juniper that we could use, but it wasn't until camping with my family and talking about all of the other botanicals and ingredients that we use in our spirits, my cousin mentioned that it grew everywhere on Beaver Island. Now Kyle came back after a weekend of camping with his family and said, I found some Michigan juniper on Beaver Island. We need to go. And there was no hesitation. We were not going to let that opportunity pass us by. I don't think I've been more excited about any spirit that we've made. And honestly, once we came up with the idea to harvest juniper from Beaver Island, that just solidified the fact that this would be one of the most fun spirits that we could possibly make. One of the craziest things about the whole trip was the fact that we're standing in the harbor in Charlevoix, the sun is shining, it feels warm, and as soon as we got out of that channel and into Lake Michigan, the sun went away, the water was black, the waves were massive, and the boat just started rocking. There was a sense of adventure about it when we, when we left. The waves picked up and were 15 foot tall, and that boat was rocking and swaying in the waves, and I had never been on water that big before, but I could not have been more excited on that boat and had more fun, and being in that open air and the, the water splashing and seeing the, 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 the colors change, the, the sun peeking through the clouds at moments, the boat rolling and rocking and just, it was like no other experience I've had in my life being on a boat like that in the water. And I was just amped up when we landed on the, on the shore. Like we had just like, we had gotten through something and we got through it together. And I know some people were probably a little less gregarious about life at that point than I was, but uh, I have to say I could not, I, I wanted to go, like we were, we had this mission and we made it, so let's, let's take advantage while we can. As soon as we were there, I was ready to get out in the field and it was clear to me that not everyone was quite as excited as me. I had my maps, I had, I had a whole plan for where we should go and the highest value targets on the island. And so going out near the airport was where we knew we could find the most property with the most juniper. But it was cold, it was windy, no one felt good after the boat ride, but we had to get to 200 pounds, and we only had a day and a half to pick that because we had to leave first thing Wednesday morning. It is uncomfortable. It was wet, and it was cold, and the juniper is picky, and it is itchy, and it makes your hands hurt, and the berries don't come off the bush, and they're tiny, and to think, we need 200 pounds of this stupid little berry to make this project happen. And every time you grab a handful, you're like, half of what I just pulled off this bush is completely worthless. I felt like we worked really hard for 20 pounds that first day. I was incredibly depressed. <laughs> And then we did a little team building exercise, right? We went out and we did some drinking together and yeah, commiserated together and said, this sucks, but we're gonna do this. We got out of bed the next morning, some of us in better shape than others, and got after it. And through good fortune, I think we found some really great places to pick this juniper. And we learned as we went along where it grew best in certain places where it's really dense it doesn't grow that well. The bushes might be huge but the berries don't produce for some odd reason and we realized that some of the more sporadic bush locations where they're, they're more spread out from each other actually produced much better uh, fruit to harvest and so we started honing in on some different spots and had great luck. We actually filled every bag that we brought with us. One of the greatest things about the journey of Long Road is the family that we've been able to develop with our staff. We have people that still work at Long Road that started with us from day one, and they're 100% committed to not us as individuals, but 
to this idea of creating world-class spirits from local ingredients right here in our neighborhood. This isn't something that you can make up. It's not something you can source from anywhere else. We had a concept, we found a few ingredients, and then we had to go execute, and we had to go find those things, and then we had to put them together in a way that were as authentic as the ingredients and as the people behind them. Our team at Long Road has been so paramount to our success. People who have committed to helping make Long Road the place that it is. You know, we have so many talented people around us that make us look good every day. That we couldn't execute the vision that we have without all of these people contributing to that vision, informing that vision. I never knew that much about Juniper other than it makes great gin and that it's the non-negotiable ingredient in gin. Beyond that, you can pretty much put in whatever you want in a gin. It's a category that's wide open. There's a, a, a preconceived notion about gin that it ultimately has to taste very pine forward. The dried berries from a lot of the traditional places really showcase that. There was a big study done about the different origins of juniper, the different species, and how from hill to hill, juniper can taste wildly different. In my mind, this juniper really being fresh exhibits a flavor that highlights the western shore of Michigan that has a, a roundness to it, that's got a brightness to it, but it also has a, a deep, rich kind of wood note to it, and it's got a, a softness to it, and it feels very approachable. It feels very accessible. So our head distiller, Brian Pribble, he was distilling in East Tennessee after making his way there from Oregon. And he uprooted his life to come to West Michigan to be the first distiller in Beer City. And it's because of his passion and his vision and his ultimate dedication to the same principles that Kyle and I have, that anything that goes out the door that's got the name Long Road on it better be the best damn product that it can be. Once we actually distilled it, it was some of the best stuff I've ever had. The flavors were unique, the, the aromas were wildly different. It's much more vegetal with cucumber and cedar notes. It just has a much more well-rounded flavor. And we didn't want to screw that up. There was actually a lot of talk amongst the production staff and ourselves and our, um, our bartenders about maybe just leaving it as juniper only, a single botanical gin, because we didn't want to screw up that flavor. We didn't want to taint the taste that we got from that distillate. And so we were very deliberate about creating a flavor profile for this gin that still lets that Beaver Island juniper shine and be the, be the star of the show. But then we layered in just a very few things to kind of accentuate some of the the flavors that you need to help make it interesting and unique on its own, but also have enough character to be able to pair with other flavors when making drinks. Honoring the journey, taking no shortcuts. It's a philosophy that infuses everything we do. Almost all of our good ideas came from late night drinking sessions in the basement. It's a taste we've been planning for years. We took the time to make sure we got this one just right. Welcome to the new state of Michigan.